Father, let's take out our Bibles. Amen. Titus, Titus chapter 1, we'll start there. And again, there's new new page, new study page tonight. <laughs> and I really, I don't know why I make so many mistakes. Human. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm human. Yeah, thank you for your so I guess it shows I need your prayers even more than you think. <laughs> Maybe that's one of this. But on the study page on the front side, about the middle, about the front side, it's page five. You know, we're talking about good men now. I'm going to expand that word good. We talk about more than just good men, but what the good, the Bible says about good. And oh yeah, and also how good God is. Amen. How good God is. Yes. About the middle of the page, you see Luke, the reference, Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Mm -hmm. Well, I made a few mistakes there. First of all, the first word there I have down is the. It should be a, a, not T-H-E. A good man out of a good treasure of his heart. And then on the second line, at the end of the second line there, you see the error there? Yeah. In Luke 6, 45, the second line. Yeah, the last word. And the second line, the last word, instead of I'm bringing, it should be E T H. So spelling error there. Now on the back side, doesn't end there. Wait, but wait, but wait, there's more. <laughs> on the back side here, uh, you see about three inches down from the top, a big letter D in parentheses. Then you see number one, a pattern of good words. And you see a person worthy of imitating. The next line. Not merely teaching, but showing them by example. Now, the next line there, really, have this verse. Two mistakes in this verse, too. The word therefore should not be there. There. It's not therefore. But the first word should be the letter as. A-S. So the capital letter A. As we have opportunity, let's do good unto all people, especially now. And then left off the unto. So it's especially unto them, and then who are, and you can fill in the rest of that blank. So I think that's all the mistakes I've made on this page. So as I go along, I might find some more, but if I, we do find some more mistakes, don't embarrass me and raise your hand and say, Pastor, you got another mistake here. Yeah, yeah thank you for not doing that. All right, Titus chapter 1, we'll begin in verse number, well, I guess in verse 5. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. Now, we're going to talk about a new group of people. They're just called good, good men. The pastor, the bishop, the elder is to be a lover of good men. And good men, what's defined by good men? The word good. And like I said, I'm going to kind of take that word good, expand it a little bit. I'll talk about good works, worth what their place is, and being, doing good works for salvation. No, it's wrong. Uh, doing good works after you're saved. That's a natural consequence and evidence of salvation. Good works. So the good, good works have their place, but you're not saved by doing any kind of good works. As much as we hear that in our church, and we know it so clearly, the world out there does not know that. I don't know what the percentage would be. It would be a high percentage, 90% of the people you talk to. If you ask them there, uh, how they get to heaven, how they get there, they probably say, well, you got to be good. Uh, you know, and some they answer that in some way, shape, or form. There, you got to be good. Got to be maybe go to church and do some good works. Or if your good works outweigh your bad, but we know so clearly that that's wrong. That's unbiblical. Mm -hmm. That's putting your faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says we put our faith in, in the Lord and what He's done for us. But I'm going to expand the name the, the term a little bit tonight as we do this part of the study. But this one next person is a good man. Good man that the bishops and the elders of the pastors are being lovers of good men. In other words, have good people as your friends. Mm -hmm. And although it's a qualification for the elders here, it's uh, what every Christian should have. Right. You know, make no fellowship with an angry man, with a furious man, thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways mm -hmm. and get a snare to thy soul. So, so far, have the right friends. The wrong friends will influence you the wrong way. The right friends, if they really are good, and good people, and good kind of Christians, then they will influence you the right way. They'll even make you feel guilty where you should feel guilty. And they'll set the right example so you can follow their example. It's so much better. Now, we have to be around some lost people, don't we, though? 
We have, if you work in a job yet, you have to be around lost people at work. Maybe you're the only Christian even where you work. In your family, maybe. Maybe there's not many people in the family that are saved. I've got a few in my family that, but not many. Not many. So many of them need to be saved. All right, we've heard this before. Let's go on. Titus chapter 1, beginning at verse number uh, 5. Titus 1, 5. For, uh, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, meaning lacking, and ordain elders, pastors in every city, as I look one of thee. Then list the qualifications. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, self-centered, not soon angry. Everybody has a temper, like I've said before, everyone does, but you have to control it. And the more you grow spiritually, the more you can't control it. Not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre. Uh, verse 8, but a lover of hospitality, meaning socializing with people, being friendly with people, and then a lover of good men. The good men here are the ones I want to talk about and the next in my list of people in the book of Titus. A lover of good men, let's continue reading, sober, that's not just sober from alcohol, but sober in your emotions and can then control yourself in every way. Just, holy, temperate, and then holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. And by the next one on the list here of people in the book of Titus will be gainsayers. After we get down with Goodman here, we'll talk about gainsayers. I've always found that kind of a curious word. One of the reasons I found it curious is people don't use it anymore. It's not in our common verbiage. Is that right? Yeah, verbiage, verbiage. Not our common language. You don't hear people using the word gainsay. Now, I know what some of you are going to do. You're going to try to get an opportunity to use gain. You're going to look it up, find what it means. And then you're going to come up to me and talk to me and say, oh, about those gainsayers, Pastor. <laughs> and by the way, do that. That'd be fun. I, I, I find that good. So, uh, to convince the gainsayers, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, and especially they of the circumcision, meaning the Jewish believers, the Jew, or rather, the Jewish people. All right, let's look at the notes now. Good men, good men. Who's considered a good man? If you're a Christian today, you should be in this category. You should be living the kind of life that people would say, you are a good man. And they could follow your example, they could uh, follow your advice, your counsel. And you should be a good man here. All right, let's read from the top of the notes. Again, number four, good men for a bishop must be a lover of good men. Number one, his friends are those of good character. He is separated from all that is shady, questionable, or wrong, even questionable. Things that maybe aren't all that right, all that wrong. Even questionable things. Just stay, stay away from everything. Really, is there anything you really have to do that uh, that's questionable? I mean, don't we have enough to do in our lives uh, that's right and correct? And we don't shouldn't have to uh, even debate whether we should do something even questionable. Just stay away from questionable things. Amen. Or wrong. Mm -hmm. And if it's wrong. Because if it's wrong, it's what? It's not right. All right, a good man is noted for his speech, his activities, and his associations too. So think about that, a good man is noted for his speech, what he says, as we preach the word of God, uh, especially as a pastor, I guess maybe more so, but everyone is, not just pastors, not just teachers, but noted for his speech, his activities, what he does, where he goes, what he does. People find out about people, don't they? You find out about other people. You find out some of the things that they do, and sometimes you wonder, well, should a Christian do that or not? But his activities, things that he does. Mm -hmm. But a good man is noted for what he does do, as well as for what he does not do. Amen. For his activities mm -hmm. and his associations. A so, quick definition here for the word good means number two. Number two, hospitable, friendly, and sociable, okay, hospitable, uh, 
hospitality, showing hospitality. Friendly, just being friendly. Like I, I've said before, I, when people visit our church, or they maybe they're not members of our church, they don't come out all the time, but they live some other place. But when the first thing they say about our church, you know the front of the first things they say about our church? Your church is so friendly. I hear that time and time and time again. Good, keep it up. <laughs> keep it up. That's a good reputation to have as a church, isn't it? We're friendly, friendly. So continue to be friendly. So glad to hear that. And then sociable, too. Uh, there's time we get together socially, and that's, that's a good thing, too, done the right way. But that's what a good man is, hospitable, friendly, and sociable, too. Number three, these good men. His friends and associates are also men of spiritual faith, quality, and integrity. There's something we call secondary separation. To be separate from churches or pastors or evangelists, to be separate from those that are, don't teach the right things or, or maybe don't have the right standards. But secondary separation is separating yourself from pastors who might be all right themselves, but they're associating with some people that we would not associate with directly. Right. So that's called secondary separation. So we're separate from the churches like some of the ones in the evangelical church and things like that. But some of the churches that maybe the pastors are good and churches are basically good, but they'll have someone in there that's uh, not exactly what we are. They've kind of compromised on having someone else in there, maybe for the music, maybe for teaching a certain class or teaching a certain thing. It's called secondary separation. Hmm. So we separate from those that are wrong about things, but we also separate from those who uh, have people in their church that are wrong about things. Mm -hmm. Secondary separation. I think that's important. Not only do we uh, separate ourselves, but we notice well, other churches, other pastors of well, other churches, who they'll have in their church, and if they're questionable, I question that. Right. And so therefore, we kind of don't have close fellowship with that. That second separation. They say, Pastor, you can reach a place where you isolate yourself. I know, I know. I want to be careful of that, too. I don't want to reach that place where we're, we're, we're in a little island here in Euclid, Ohio. And we're the only ones that are preaching the bright. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of something, doesn't it? In the Old Testament, he thought he was the only one standing for truth. But there are there are other good churches yeah. out there. Yep. There are other good pastors out there. Yeah. There are other good Christians out there. Yeah. But there is such a thing as secondary separation too. Mm -hmm. So a good, a lover of good men, to be selective in who you'll fellowship with. Be selected. His friends and associates are also men of spiritual, spiritual faith, quality, and integrity. Now, number four, I got this as a quote from somebody else. I thought it was good. I thought it explained things pretty well. It said, the pastor of Bishop Elder is one who enjoys the company and fellowship of others. He is not a CEO because he's a bishop. He kind of overseeing the work. Now they use this kind of illustration. He's not a chief executive officer, CEO, who isolates himself. Mm -hmm. But he is among the faithful, teaching them the word of God and praying with them. Amen. So he doesn't live up in the island, doesn't run up to a mountaintop somewhere and, and just live by himself. He, not like that. So the CEO doesn't isolate himself. And, you know, it's hard even for me as a pastor to be out there and witnessing the people. I had office packs in other places. I run across them. Because sometimes, well, Christian, isn't this true in your life? One of the reasons you're sometimes a little fearful or uh, holding back about talking to somebody or witnessing to somebody is you're afraid that they're going to ask you a question that you uh, might not have a good answer for. Doesn't that make you a little bit uh, uneasy, uh, maybe uh, uh, fearful about talking to somebody? Well, don't let that bother you. You don't have a good answer. Just say, you know, that's a good question. Right now, I don't have a good answer. Mm -hmm. Always be ready for something like that because they can ask you questions like that. And by the way, they can ask me questions like that too. They can ask even the pastor. Uh, Brother Jeffrey and myself studied the Bible years and years, and Brahma, of course, and others in our church that know the Bible real well. But sometimes somebody can ask you a question you're just not quite ready for, and you don't come up with a real good answer. Five, ten minutes later, you think of a good answer after they've left. You know, we've all gone through that. But to have good answers ready, to be ready for, for these 
these times where you can talk to somebody. But so don't isolate yourself by being fearful about people if they might ask you a question that right off the top of your head you don't have an answer for. So that happens, that happens. Mm -hmm. So don't let that scare you and don't let that hinder you from, and just say, well, you know, that's, in fact, that might be a, a good way to make a second contact with them. Yeah. You know, you can even write them a letter or something, maybe a phone call, maybe write them a letter. I think letters are good. I, I do that. I write them a letter say, you know, when you asked me that question, I didn't have a good ready answer there, but here I, I have some information, some thoughts, here's a good verse, I write the verse, whatever it is. It's just a good opportunity for a second contact with somebody. You think about that. When you don't have a good answer to their questions, it could be a good opportunity to make another contact with them. And I think they'll be, uh, not flattered, but they'll, they'll, they'll find it interesting, interesting that you took the time to write them a personal letter. Amen. A personal letter. Don't you like getting personal letters? I do. When I go to the mailbox, either our post office box or here at church or home, of course, if there's a personal letter written to me, I think it arouses my curiosity. <laughs> Now, sometimes it's somebody that's trying to straighten our church out on some Dr. Lisher or something, or they got their little uh, bone to pick, as we say. Maybe that, but personal letters, it really gets my uh, interest up. But I, get, I, I see a, a personal letter written to our church, or even me individually, as a pastor, and then wonder what this is all about. A personal letter, a personal letter. So use that opportunity. So even though you might not have a good answer for that, uh, write them a letter. That shows that, that they are important to you, that you, you took the time to write a letter just for them. Brother Nesbitt. That guy you get one, you can't wait to, to open it up. Can you? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. You can't wait to open it up. You get to think what? and open it up. You don't get to. But hey, don't you? That's right. They don't even get your letter open. You just open it up with your, with your hand. Yeah. yeah. What is this all about? That's right. That's right. So make contact with people. Don't be fearful about things. We all have that problem. Okay, now letter A. Letter A now. We're going to look at a few verses about good men. Psalm chapter two, uh, 37, verse 23. Definitions of good men. Psalm, when you, when this, uh, the possible elder pastors here, one of the qualifications that they're a lover of good men. Let's find out what makes a good man. And this is the test that we should have as a friend, or maybe not have as friends. Good. Not have at least close friends if they're they would go along with this. Psalm 37, verse 23. By the way, just a little sad. I miss my old friends. I really do. The ones I used to hang around before I got saved, yeah. Now I know they're not, you know, they're not where they need to be spiritually. And by the way, a lot of them, they would get the newsletter for 40 years, something. Wow. 40 years, yeah. One of my old friends moved a couple of years ago, and somehow I got word that he wanted me to continue sending him the newsletter to his new address. Now, and I thought that, that that's tremendous. That's tremendous that he wanted to still get the newsletter. Because when people move, that's a good opportunity to stop getting that newsletter. He really didn't want it, but he wanted it. All right, verse 23, Psalm 37, verse 23. The steps of a here is good man are ordered by the Lord. That means that the Lord is leading in his life in different ways. Of course, as we know what the Bible says, we need to follow the Bible, but the Lord orders us, directs us to. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So as we follow them, we're following, following what the, how the Lord is leading them. Isn't that interesting? When you're following the right kind of man, good man, you're really indirectly following the Lord. By following the right man, good man, Biblical men, scriptural men, godly men, saved men. Mm -hmm. By following them, you're actually following the Lord indirectly. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. What's the back of a good man's steps? The Lord is. And he delighted in his way. There's a delight, there's a joy there. Uh, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2. Good men, good men. Find those good men, follow them. By the way, those single people too, you need to find a good man if you're lady, or a guy, good lady to, uh, to possibly marry to make sure they have these qualifications. Make sure they have 
the right the Christian quality here. Right. Okay, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2. I know I have a verse written down here, but I'd still like to look in the Bible here. Okay, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2. And this way we can find out if I made any more mistakes, too. <laughs> All right, a good man obtaineth favor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. There again, a good man doing what's right in the Lord's sight. To obtain favor of the Lord. I want the Lord to be favorable. I want to be favorable with the Lord. Amen. I want the Lord to look upon me knowing that I will do what's right. And he, I want his favor. Yes. yes, that's good. Favor. The word favor is kind of an interesting one. When somebody is the favorite. Now, you're not, I guess you're not supposed to do this as you're, if you've got several kids, you shouldn't have a favorite. You should treat all your kids the same. Uh, I think that's right. It's really, but but there's going to be a favorite. <laughs> favorite. What does that mean? That means they like them more than they like others. They might like everybody some, but there's someone that you like a little bit more than another. They have a, a favorite. Christian, we are God's favorites. Amen. Isn't that great? A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord. The Lord looks upon us to be one of his favorite ones. But a man of wicked devices, just the opposite, a man of wicked devices, will he condemn? Mm -hmm. So he's pleased with one that is favored, that pleased with, and the other he will condemn. He will judge. He will ju bring judgment into that person's life. All right, Proverbs 13, verse 22. Proverbs 13, verse 22. A good man, oh, and this deals with families in particular. I found this interesting. You've heard it here recently, too, I think. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Uh, what's the term we use today? Grandkids, grandchildren, grandsons, granddaughters. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. Here's one of the problems with broken families. The parents, or the grandparents, don't take care of the grandkids because then the families are all broken up. All broken up. That's one of the big problems, as of course, in America today with the broken families. But here's one of the reasons. The families are to take care of each other. That's a biblical responsibility. But a good man leaving an inheritance, a good man, leaving an inheritance of children, children, and the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. A good man handles his finances right. Mm -hmm. A good man handles his finances right. He's not in debt, he's not bankrupt, he's not hooked on uh, lottery tickets and gambling. Uh, other ways, you know, people lose money. But a good man, even in here, he, he understands that the money he makes, of course we give to the Lord first, but our family is important financially to take care of it. Now, what, what, if a family member or those that aren't doing right financially, that's a whole different matter. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone that deserves this. Mm -hmm. A good man uh, leaving that inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last part of verse 22 is very curious. The wealth of the sinner. Okay, do sinners have money? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, some of them really well there. Yeah. Do sinners have money? Do sinners have a, some of them have a lot of money, though. Yeah. And they're sinners, they're not saved, they're not Christians, but they have a lot of money. But notice what the last part of verse 22 here says. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the verse, we're talking about family. People take care of their own family when it's right, when it's proper. But the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. It's going to turn around. All the money that those the, un the unsaved people are, are accumulating, Chris, we're going to get it. You're going to get it. When the Lord comes back, things will be straight. But I think this happens even before that, too. Yeah. That's a very curious verse there, the last part of verse 22. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, for those that are justified. The Lord has a way of changing things around, switching things around. Look what happened to Joseph in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. He took over, basically. That's what happened to Joseph in Egypt. He took over there. He took over. He was second command, really, because he controlled everything. He almost said he really is, he was in control of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Joseph was. Isn't that interesting how the Lord works that out? 
So Christian, you just be faithful to the Lord. Don't worry about all those people getting wealthy. Read, read Psalm 73 if you get kind of discouraged about that. And you think, well, it seems like I'm going through more problems than the lost world. Read chapter, Psalm chapter 73. That will encourage you. You'll understand it more readily that way. But a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That's a good man. What kind of man does this? A good man, good man. All right, let's go to Luke now, chapter 6, verse 45. Let's see the mistakes I made here. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Good man. By the way, a good man, it means a good man or a woman. Of course, you know that. Chapter 6, verse 45. <clears throat> Interesting thoughts he's brought. talked about the heart. Person's heart here. Uh, evil talks about good versus evil here too. And it also says, it brings up why people talk about what they talk about. Why do people talk about what they talk about? Hmm. It also answers that question. Let's read now Luke chapter 6, verse 45. It says, A good man out of the good out of the good treasure in his, of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. So where does the good emanate from? The heart. The heart. A good, again, verse 45, a good man. Now here's a good man, we're talking about good men, that bishops and elders and pastors should be lovers of good men. A good man, out of a good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. So where does this good come from in his heart? Now, continue on. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. Well, that's clear enough, isn't it? And then the last part of verse 45, it says here, For of the abundance of the heart, mm -hmm. the mouth speaketh. Yep. Whatever's in the heart, and abundance talks about a lot of it there. When, when you have a lot of it in your heart, it's going to come out in your speech, in what you say. What you're really thinking about, what's really inside of you, what really is your motivation, what really is your heart, as we use that term here, the mouth speaketh. And like I've said before, I, I like to listen to people talking, even in restaurants. I kind of overhear different conversations going on. And it's kind of interesting to hear different conversations. There was one time, was, oh, a number of years ago, I heard about somebody saying, yeah, I invested $5,000 in this one thing, dealing with computers and so forth. And, and I, I got, ended up getting, making $40,000 out of it. And here's how I did it. And then I was sitting at the next table, I went, <laughs> kind of like that. Uh, what was that old commercial that everybody heard? Yeah, you know, when Eve Hutton speaks, yeah, everybody, my, my, that's right, my, something was Eve Hutton, and Eve Hutton told me, and everybody kind of leaned over to hear what he said. Well, that's kind of one of these, listen to people. Listen to me, what comes out of their mouth? Oh, it's embarrassing sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's encouraging. <laughs> sometimes you hear Bible verses come out of people's mouths. Yeah. I was at Office Max. Can I tell you a quick Office Max story again? Amen. Real quick Office Max today. Because yeah. Eric's these outlines and, well, mistakes in them. I uh, was Eric's in those. And I heard two of the ladies that worked there start talking about church. Amen. Now, they know I'm a pastor, but they didn't say, get my ear. I, I know they were talking just amongst themselves, kind of quietly. One was saying, yeah, I got married in the church. I went there, and, and they have, oh, what did they say? Uh, oh, they said, in our church now, we've started having church service first, and then Sunday school after the church service. And I thought, yeah, I know churches like that. I still don't know why in a church would do that. I still haven't figured that out at all. I've not heard any good reasons why you have church first and then Sunday school. I, I don't know. Anyways, but she was talking about that. And she says, yeah, I, when I, my church, I got buried in. She talked a little about that. They were talking about church. Amen. I wonder if it was the fact that I was in there. They, they kind of remind them, reminds them, because they don't want pastor and all. Um, maybe that kind of prompted their thought, thought processes. I don't know. But I thought, what a blessing that is. People talking about going to church. Yeah. What a blessing that was. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to bring forth that which is the, for, uh, for of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. Right. Listen to people, what they're talking about. Is it good things, bad things? Well, everyday things. You have to talk about everyday things, too. 
important things, not important things, fun things. You know, what's the abundance of the heart? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Listen to people. They're revealing themselves to you by what they say. But what they think, what, what they find is important. What they find is important. That's why it makes a difference as a Christian. We, we talk about the Lord, we talk about the Bible, we, uh, we recite Bible verses of the people, and that, that, why? Because it's in our hearts. Amen. Right. Because it's in our hearts, that's why. Mm -hmm. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Listen to what people say, you'll find out what they are. That's right. All right, Acts chapter 11, verse 22 now. <clears throat> Acts chapter 11. And verse 22 to 24. Oh yeah, Barnabas. What a good man Barnabas was. But he ended up having a big fight with Paul. And they split their ways. But, but Barnabas said he was a good man. Shame Christians have to disagree sometimes. Or do have disagree. Acts chapter 11, verse 22. And I'll just read a few verses here. And there's some blanks to fill in here. If you want to fill in the blanks now or just uh, listen to the lesson you can, or fill them in. Acts chapter 11, verse 22, talking about Barnabas, who was a good man, a good man. And then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came, so he's traveling to Antioch here now. Verse 23 is so good. I like hearing verse 23. Who when he came and had seen the grace of God, how can you see the grace of God in people? He saw the grace of God in these people. How do you see it? By what they believe, by what they say, Amen. by understanding of spiritual things. That's the grace of God. <laughs> Without the grace of God working in people's lives, they wouldn't understand anything spiritually. That's God's graciousness. That's his mercy. Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was, was glad. That cheered him up like it cheers us up. Makes us happy. And exhorted them all, so he continued them to, to do the same things. He exhorted them, encouraged them to keep it going, don't stop. Mm -hmm. That with purpose of heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. Cleave. You probably know what the word cleave means, but I put it in the notes there under Romans chapter 12, verse 9, a couple of lines down. The cleave means to be faithful to the Lord, faithful, to cling to, hold on, grasp him, to stick and stick with him. So they would cleave unto the Lord. Stay serving the Lord. That's one of our ministries. Barnabas did this. This made Barnabas, uh, given the title, to be a good man. The kind of friend you need to have. Those that will help you stay with the Lord. That's a good man. That's a definition of a good man. Those that would help you stay with the Lord. Keep on serving the Lord. Keep on reading that Bible. Keep coming out to church. Yeah. Keep serving the Lord. Make him your priority. Make him number one in your life. That's a good man. Mm -hmm. A good man is one that will encourage you in serving and continuing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a good man. Amen. That's the kind of people you want to have influence in your life mm -hmm. and make a big difference in your life to keep you on the right road too. Christian friend, we need each other. <laughs> there's, there's time for individual Christianity. Absolutely. Devotions, read the Bible. But we need times together too with other Christians. That's one of the main purposes for a church. But we need that fellowship. We need other Christians to encourage us when we need it. Amen. When we need it. Then with purpose of heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. He tried to encourage that. Keep on going. You're doing great right now. I'm so glad what I see. Keep it up. Keep it going. And then verse 24. For he was a good man. There's a good man. A lover of good men. Marcus is one of them. For he was a good man. And full of the Holy Ghost, and he know the Word of God, the Word of God living and dwelling inside of him, making that kind of difference in his life. And of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith. I'm going to be filled with faith. Well, we need to grow in faith, too. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. Hearing. And, and hearing by? The Word of God. Yeah, the Word of God. You knew that, didn't you? Well, I am exhorting you to Continue cleaving unto the Lord here. Good. Number, again, verse 24. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith. And faith, too. And much people was added unto the Lord. Full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith. Can't that be said about us? Are we good men? Good men, good women. Good Christians here today. For he was a good man, Barnabas was. 
Romans chapter number 12, verse 9. Romans 12, 9, it's almost like Paul was finishing out the letter, he's running out of time or something, and he just jammed a lot of things here right at the end. Romans chapter 12, verse number 9. And I, I like this so many different, in fact, I'm gonna back up here a little bit. Amen. Let's back up to, uh, I guess verse six. Romans chapter 12, verse six, because we're just about at time here. Uh, Romans 12, verse six, having then gifts differing, differing gifts, people, Christians have different gifts, they're not all the same, mm -hmm. uh, according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, preaching the word of God, according to the uh, proportion of faith, or ministry, uh, like a radio, not a radio program, uh, show. It's not a radio show. It's not a radio program. Yeah. What is it? Radio ministry. Good. Okay. I changed it in a bulletin this Good. week. It's radio ministry now. Good. Good. Okay, or ministry. Amen. Let us wait on our ministry, or he that teaches on teaching, involve whatever gift and talent God has given you, use it for him. Or he that exhorted on exhortation. Exhortation, isn't that what Barnabas uh -huh. did. And he was called a good man. Mm -hmm. So let's exhort each other to keep on serving the Lord. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no hidden motives there. Simplicity means when you give, there's no hidden motives. You just want to give it because you want to give it to the Lord. Simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Now, no phoniness about it. Abhor that which is evil. Mm -hmm. Cleave that which is, there's that word cleave again. Amen. Cleave. Hold on tightly. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Like Philippians chapter 2 there. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Working your job. Not slothful. Fervent in spirit. Having a joy there. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in, in tribulation. We passed up verse 9, didn't we? Yeah, let the love be without the simulation that more that which is good. Cleave to cleave to that which is good. Cleave to that which is good. Hold on. Find out what the good things are. Hold on to them. That's what that's saying. And then one more verse yet tonight. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Yeah, be a good example. Be a good man. Pastors and other Christians need to have as good friends. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Another list of many different qualities. We'll stay with verse 22 or 21. It says, prove all things, and again, hold fast, hold fast. Mm -hmm. That's the word cleave again. It could be used. Hold fast. That which is good. Good, good, good. Now, if you will, I'm going to turn you to James chapter number. I think it's James chapter 1. I think it's the one I want. Let me see it. Every good gift, a good gift, that's what I want. Every good gift, very perfect gift from above, and coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I... Yeah, verse 17. There is James chapter 1, verse 17. We'll close with this. Now, good, to be a good man, and to be friends with good men. So people are, if you find a good man, you want to be a friend with them. And those who are looking for friends and want to have a good man as a friend, would they choose you to be one of them good men? James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. All the good things of this world are from the Lord. That's right. That's what that means. Yep. Very simple. It could be put more clearly. Mm -hmm. every, every good gift, yeah. every means all of them, nothing left out. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. Mm -hmm. So all the bad things is not from above. All the bad things are not from the Lord. They're not from God. All the bad things are from us or from the devil too, prompting us. But every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights. Kind of interesting. Father of lights, lights, L I G H E. He gives light, He gives understanding. With whom no variableness, it never changes, Amen. neither shadow of turning. Not even the slightest little bit does God change it. He's always in back of all the good and the good things he wants to give, give us. All right, so the elders are lovers of good men. Look at who a person's closest friends are. Mm -hmm. yep. 
That tells you a lot about them, doesn't it? Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this Bible study as we continue now talking about good men, how to define them, how to recognize them, how to know them, and also how to act toward them too. To have them as our friends, the good ones, the right ones, the, the good men like Barnabas and others in the Bible. So Lord, thank you for this time. I pray we'll think about these things and apply them to ourselves personally and individually so we will be better Christians for those that are born again, born again and saved, and bound for heaven, going to heaven someday. In Jesus' name we pray and ask you now. Thank you for this good evening too, and thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it. Amen.